session and regular council meeting to order. Would everyone please rise for a moment of silence and let's remember all those who passed away during the month. Mr. Gerard, Mr. Gerard called uh, uh, a little while ago and said that he was not feeling well, uh, so he would not be here. Mr. Devine, uh, absent. Uh, Mr. Peza? Here. Ms. Cullen? Here. Ms. Rodriguez? Here. Mr. Gordon? Present. Mr. Patricia? Present. Participation. Anybody on this side of the room want to speak on anything? Go to the podium and state your name for the record. Your address. Sure. Hi, my name is. Right here. Oh. Good. Right here. Podium. Right here. To the podium. Where the microphone is. Okay. Sorry. The microphone. Hi, how are you? Uh, my name is Mary Ann Lynch. I am the executive director of the Women's Place. We are um, Bucks County's domestic violence response center. And every year, Brooks and Burrell has been so generous in allowing us to tie ribbons around the coast in the community to bring awareness to domestic violence during the month of October. <coughs> um, we are respectfully requesting once again to do that on September 25th this year. And um, I just want to put in um, information about a woman's place. We serve all residents of Bucks County. We have a 24-7 hotline, 1-800-220-8116. If you know someone who's experiencing domestic violence or if you are yourself, give us a call. And we, can, we will be there on the other end of the phone 24-7. We have counseling services, legal services. We also provide shelter and safe housing for people who are experiencing abuse. So thank you so much for your past support. Could you just repeat that phone number once more? Sure. It's 1-800-220-8116. And there's someone on the other end of the line, 24-7. And just to um, reiterate what she's saying, every year we have had the woman's place come into town. They were, they were once in Bristol. Um, and they always come in, put the ribbons up. They have volunteers. We're still here. Are you still here? We're still here. 97 Wood Street oh, is, yeah, is our good. official. Okay, good, good. Address. That's good. Yes. That's good to put that out there too. And now uh, when they do come in and put the ribbons all over town, they usually have volunteers. Kids can volunteer. Adults can volunteer. It's a very good program. And at the end of the time, they do come back and take them down in case somebody gets upset because they're hanging these purple ribbons and they think we're just going to leave them there and we never do. We take them down. No, we take them down every year. And this, the, this year's date is September 25th. We'll be starting around 10 a.m. So if you'd like to come out and support the organization, We'll have a table of information there at the same time. Um, maybe some goodies, and some water, and uh, we would love the help. And it's just really to bring awareness to domestic violence. One of the stats I just heard recently was that 275 million children worldwide grow up in homes where there is domestic abuse. Thank you. Thank, Thank you so you much. You do. Thank you. I'll leave a couple of my cards here. To is 97 Wood Street on the um, parking lot side? Right. Uh, Okay. Yes. All right. That's okay. Got <laughs> yeah. it. That's why he's giving all. Got it. Yeah. So I'll leave a couple of my cards. Anyone else on this side? Have a nice night. Thank you. Anyone on this side of the room want to speak on anything? Sure. Hi. My name is Jessica Hill. I'm the executive director of Women's Place. Um, I'm here to thank you for allowing us to be here and to does this almost single-handedly every year, and she needs our support. It's going to be November the 27th, Saturday, and it is, I mean, I've been going to this parade since I was a little girl, and I want to see it's if you can. Oh, <laughs> thanks, Ralph, because you two, right back at you, honey. Anyway, <laughs> she needs our support. I have the forms here. Just so you know, every year we donate $2,500. I know you do. But it is still 
a lot of because they can't hear you with your mask on. Okay. Can you yeah. yeah. Or you can I can hold, do that. Hold it up. I can do that. I can do that for now. Nobody's <coughs> so Ms. Please, not to interrupt you, but what you're looking is for physical help, like people in the town that want to volunteer and help with the parade. And donations and as donations. well. Um, she was saying that she needs a sponsor for the horse and carriage and for all kinds of things. Um, and help. So and where can people send, or how do they contact you? I have all the information right here. I'll leave it. Um, the number is 215-789-0177, and that's Ellen Scanzel. And everybody knows her. She is, she's a sweetheart, and she needs help. So can you repeat that one more time, the phone number? 215-789-0177. Seven. Thank and you. November 27th, Saturday, rain date the 28th. Um, it's a bristle tradition. We don't want to see it go. And man, when that parade happens, you see everybody. The streets are lined up. Nobody cares about anything else except that parade and having a great time. It brings all the families out. It brings our community together in a positive yes. manner. So we, we need that to continue. Yes? I just have a question. What's involved? Did you say they're looking for a sponsor for the... Yeah. The, um, for, is that with Santa and... Yes. This is the horse and carriage for Santa and Mrs. Claus, as a matter of fact. Yes. Yes. Absolutely. So please, anybody and everybody that's listening, if you have monetary donations, that's always great. But physical donation, you know, physical help is always welcome too. So, and I'll leave this yeah, information. Yeah, some of them that you gave me to okay. all the council people. Got a bunch of them. Thanks, Denise. Denise, I'll be looking for you to dance with at the doo-wop Saturday. Mm -hmm. I may not be here. I, am, I have a family crisis, but I'll tell you what, you dance for me. <laughs> I will. Okay. Uh, anybody I'm else sorry, on this side of the room want to speak on anything? Okay, that ends public participation. Mayor? Did you say mayor? Yes. Pardon me? Call me mayor. That's okay. You want me to come back to you? No, I'm good. Before the mayor starts, can I just say one thing? He's back. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. I want to thank everybody for all the uh, phone calls, emails, cards, letters. Thank you very much. Um, hopefully we're uh, we're back for good. Not sure I'll be at everything for the first month or two, but I hope to be to the parade. That's for sure. Um, during the month, let's see. I've been in contact, even though I haven't been here, with uh, Chief Henry and um, Chief Slack during my time away. Um, you know, I always bring up every month about the, the number of calls. Uh, for service and uh, looking at what's been going on so far still looks like we're a little around 800 calls um, for service a month in Bristol Borough and that's just a little bit uh, below what we had last year um, so I don't think there's anything of other major consequence going on in the police department other than I am sad if you don't already know to report that uh, Chief Henry has decided to retire um, after his stay here for about six years. Uh, he surely has brought a lot of uh, new, innovative, and um, made us all aware of what it takes to run a police department today. Uh, I think we're going to miss him. I hope he'll give us some input into uh, what type of uh, candidate we should be interviewing. Although I know council will take care of that. Uh, I hope to have uh, some input on that. Uh, fire. <clears throat> the fire companies, if, I don't know if you remember, but uh, council had done a request for a survey, state survey, and that was completed. Basically, I have asked council to uh, support me in an effort to bring all this together. The fire companies have been working together. There are, we are four fire companies, as we all know now, in the borough. Um, 
you know, with their allocation is four fire companies, and then the uh, state fire allocation will be for four companies this year. So they're working very hard. They have a company that they hired that will uh, is leading them through the process of forming an association, which is the primary recommendation in the state survey was that the fire companies look to form an association together, whatever name they want to call it, and, and that would be the first big step in complying with it. The next big step will be council changing the ordinance. Um, I know we've submitted a preliminary uh, ordinance to Mr. Dillon, who said he would give it to Mr. Salerno. Uh, it's very preliminary. So that all has to be restructured. Also, the fire department has, under the ordinance currently, a uh, position of two deputy fire chiefs. We have a fire chief and two deputies. Currently, we only have one deputy. Uh, chief Slack and, chief, and Deputy Chief Goslin have recommended to me that we put that second deputy chief's position back in, um, you know, actually council um, appoint somebody to that position. Uh, they have both recommended to me uh, Alexander J. DeAngelis. Actually, everybody calls him A.J. DeAngelis. <coughs> He's the chief downstairs at Station 50. Um, I have his complete resume here. Anybody like to see it? <coughs> or if it may, was it in your packet? I don't know. He is uh, well qualified for the position, and they both recommended that uh, we submit his name. And one of the challenges, you know, a couple months back, uh, the a couple of township companies got together and sent a letter. Uh, we have yet to be able to get together to meet, but I will, will tell you this. We've been working together with those companies um, over the last couple months. We seem to be getting along well. I'll try and res resuscitate that meeting if they still want to meet. I know Ralph had talked to me earlier. Uh, Chief Slack had put in for a grant through FEMA, and the Bristol Consolidated Fire Company and Bristol Fire Company have been awarded a FEMA assistant firefighter grant as part of a regional uh, grant to replace outdated self-contained breathing apparatus. Um, if you put in as a region, you get, you get a better chance of getting it. So Chief Slack uh, reached out to the Bristol Township Fire Companies and 3rd District Fire Company and Newportville Fire Company and Cornwell's of Ben Salem joined it. The award total to be shared by all five companies is $638,545.45. The two borough fire companies are projected to receive a total of $231,500. And this is all for breathing equipment that the firemen wear to go into the buildings. Uh, each fire company will be required to provide a 10% match of their share, approximately $12,500 each. Final cost will be determined from the quote Chief Slack has asked to pass on to council if they could include that $25,000 in the budget to cover the 10% cost. Um, we won't know. I think it's another month or so before we finally know what the total cost are. And I think that's it for me. Chief, do you have anything? I just wanted to thank. Uh, Again, the DeCaro family for uh, the Bristol and Farrell Police Night Out Fair at St. Anne's Carnival. And I thank you personally, uh, Ralph, for uh, assisting with that. We've had over 400 of the borough kids uh, get treated to that night. I think it was a pretty great event. I um, hope some of that it continues. School's open. Please drive carefully. Sergeant Fate had his safety briefing with all of the uh, crossing guards, as he does every year. So again, just asking the public to be aware that the kids are out there crossing. And today we signed criminal complaints against Angela Citrone. Mr. Citrone was the individual back in July when we had the shooting incident on Route 13. It was a road rage incident. It started in a borough. It was like a car chase throughout the borough. It ended on Pine Street and ended up in what we suspected was a barricade situation. Uh, we had information from <coughs> residents that the individual had actually <coughs> went into that residence and we believed him to be armed. At that point, uh, South Central, excuse me, the South SWAT team was notified. Uh, we inconvenienced the residents on our street for their safety for 
until the wee hours of the morning until the SWAT team made entry after we secured a search warrant, and unfortunately he was not in the residence. Uh, we didn't give up on it. We kept after it, and we did find out that he was in the neighborhood. He had basically forced his way into another uh, residence and actually laid in wait until we had left that scene the next morning. So after putting a lot of pieces together, a lot of good uh, police work, we had enough probable cause today to sign a warrant. So he's still an active individual, but we'll eventually bring him to justice. That's it. Yeah, I have one, one more thing. Are you done, Chief? Yes, sir. Um, uh, just wanted to, I don't know if anybody knows this or, or really cares, but uh, our EMA manager and myself sit on the uh, Dow Community Advisory Board, and we've been working the last four years trying to get a generator uh, for the high school. And lo and behold, we were successful this year in doing that. Uh, Dow Corporation is going to be tearing a, uh, their old engineering building down, and they have this perfectly good million-dollar generator sitting there. And uh, they've been kind enough to donate it. Um, Merle coordinated a lot of this with uh, Freddie Cullen and Dennis at the school, and we were able to get it moved with another 30-some thousand dollars to bring in a company to lift up everything and transport it here. As of this date, all costs have been covered, and the school has a, a brand new, I don't know, what is that, Merle, 980,000 kW generator? Probably could run half the, half the town. That's great. Which will enable us to have another emergency center. That's right. If we have a major snowstorm or something, we can put that there. So That's I just great. wanted to. That is, that's great. Thank you. Positive, please. That's Any it. other questions for the chief? Chief, I, Roy, sad to see you leave, I'll be honest with you. You brought a lot of class and dignity to this borough, and a lot of people respect you. So you're going to truly be missed. Well, I appreciate that, and I appreciate the support that I've had from all of you on here. And I think, uh, you know, it was a good learning experience for everybody. Um, but I l really enjoyed the back and forth that I had openness with the council members. Um, it Not wasn't Lorraine, always, though. Huh? Not Lorraine. I know. You looked right at me. I'm only kidding. She always knows when to call at the exact time. It's it like, it like Sunday at 5 and in August. Right. Uh, uh, but no, so it was when, like, it's a phenomenal borough, phenomenal people, um, and I will really miss this group. We will miss you. When officially do you have it? Are you going to be here for the November meeting? Yes, sir. Okay. So you're here. Are Mr. you here till the whatever. end of the year or till November? I gave him November 17th because uh, in the uh, agreement that we have, it said you needed a three-month window, so I didn't want to put you in a bad way. So okay. we can work it out with Mr. Dillon, but. Right. Um, that's so there is a date established because last time we talked there were, was not a date. Yeah, I needed to give him a solid date okay. just for, his, for that aspect of it. All right. No problem. No other questions for the chief? So, Craig, you have something you want. I don't want to hold you up all night. So, if you want to go to the podium. Thanks, Ralph, and member of the council. I just wanted to remind everyone and invite them out Saturday night. After a couple of years off, the doo-wop concert is going to return to Bristol Borough. Uh, I think it's going to be uh, just an amazing night. So many people have been asking about it. Ralph, you know how long you've been working on it. So it's this Saturday night, September the 18th. The music's going to start at 5 o'clock. Uh, there is eight groups this year. So it's going to be a hell of a show. It's Joel Katz and the Dynamics, the Chicklets, the Elegant. Bill Haley Jr. and the comments doing a salute to his father. That should be pretty good. The videos of him look outstanding. The happenings, Eddie Holman, the times, and the return of Bobby Wilson. If everybody was there, it was about three years ago now, four years ago, that's Jackie Wilson's son. Mm -hmm. uh, could have been the maybe best act we've ever had in the yep. park. He, Absolutely. He, he took it out. I so agree. He'll be there. And uh, at the last meeting, we were assured he is doing a full show. It's not a 15-minute. So Bobby Wilson could be doing anywhere from 40 minutes to an hour. So Beautiful. that should be a great show. Beautiful. For anybody that's driving, you know, parking going to be a problem since the events in the parking lot. We are going to have parking behind the Lennox building, and there'll be bus shuttles starting at 4 o'clock. The shuttles will want to run continuously until 11. Um, we also will be doing our Bristol trivia, you know, giving away gift certificates gift certificates for all the restaurants in town. There's going to be food trucks, vendors, 
and please bring your money because we got a 50-50 raffle and we got to support the doo-wop concert going forward. God forbid it should rain. The rain date is Sunday, September the 19th. But once again, please share, tell everybody, bring your lawn chairs this Saturday starting at 5 o'clock. What time is the rain? Both rain dates are, both days are five? I believe both rain dates are five. Okay. And uh, weather's starting to change in our direction. I got to look at that. Let's see if the rain date is five. Five, yeah, I, I didn't, I, when the act, I don't know. Maybe if Ann is, really if Ann is watching the meeting, she'll text me to okay. correct me if I'm wrong. Anybody have any questions about the concert? No. It's a free, it's a free event. There's plenty of parking and there's bus shuttles, so. Back and forth. Everybody can come out and have a good time. Wonderful. Thanks, Beth. Thank you, Craig. Thanks for all your help and all you do for this town. Okay. Uh, I'm going to go first because I usually go last, but I got a couple things I want to. I'm going to sit back and relax. Yeah, sit back and relax. <laughs> all right. So let's. Uh, let me just get it out there before I know how everybody feels about trash. Trash has been a total nightmare in this town. So we're, you know, we're at a point now where the residents are unhappy, council's been unhappy, and we're doing everything we can to try to get this resolved. This isn't just a Bristol Borough thing. <clears throat> this is, if you look at uh, Pennsylvania, the eastern part of Pennsylvania and all over, even New Jersey, there, everybody's having problems. There's trash out in Northampton, I heard, for four days, and still sitting on the streets. Newtown. New Hope. So no matter where you go, there's a trash problem. It's like I said, it's not a Bristol Borough thing, but you know, we're fed up. I called Mascara personally on Friday when I heard they weren't coming in again, and he said, "Look, we're doing everything we can. We're going to pick up what we can pick up. If we got to work Saturday and Sunday, we will clean this town up and hopefully get back on schedule." Now they're doing tomorrow. They said they are coming tomorrow to pick up trash. Uh, hopefully Friday they could pick up trash. They know they know there's a problem. They know we're unhappy. But I want to clear up a couple things. One, <clears throat> we did not give Mascara an extra $2 million. Whoever, you know, people that are writing this stuff down or, or, or talking about this, they're clueless. They are under the same contract. This year ends their original five-year contract. You want to write that down, Mr. Bixler, because I know you. I didn't say anything. No, I'm just saying. It wasn't me. No, I'm just saying. It wasn't me. But I'm saying, we're, I just want you to know, too, because I know you talk to a lot of people. They are still working on their five year contract. We exercised our option to bring them in for two more years. If we didn't exercise that option today, when we did, they would not want that contract right now because they can't find the help. And they would never be obligated to fulfill that contract. They said to me on the phone that was the worst decision they made was to accept that additional two years. Because trash after this two years is going to be astronomically high. They just it's just going to be the nature of the beast right now. So they're and they're also not getting an extra fifty cents. There's a contract for five years with a two-year option. We didn't give them more money to say, well, we're going to give you more. All we did was over the three, last, this year and the next two years make the same amount of money go across for three years. They didn't get any more money. And, again, I think the best thing we did was exercise that option because you're going to see trash contracts are going to be through the roof in the next. If we were at the bid right now, because it ends this year, I guarantee you could add 30, 40 percent to our contract. And if anybody thinks I'm, I'm nuts, watch what's going to happen in two years. So that's the first thing. They did come in Sunday to finish. Okay. They did come in Sunday to finish. They did. Yeah. So, I mean, look. Can I, can I add something to that? I, I agree with everything that you just said. Um, you know, and Mascara's obviously been a big and professional outfit so if we had gone even with a smaller one I, I would guess it would be even worse that said I think we all agree we still pay them handsomely and you know we expect we expect service I mean, there's a lot of businesses many of us in business will tell you 
that are struggling with labor. It's a real thing. Um, it's a hard thing on any business. And we have been patient, and I think we'll remain patient, but we really, all of us, I know we've had these conversations, are equally frustrated. That's all. Yeah. And also, Jim has a, a personal in with somebody there, and if somebody calls me, tells me that they didn't get picked up yet, I contact Jim, he contacts the person, and that's it. It, the, they say, oh, we're coming back the next day, the next day, whatever. So they are trying to work with us. It's upsetting. It's frustrating. I mean, my trash was out for three days, you know, but it's the nature of the beast right now. I mean, the problem is, look, we're all taxpayers. We all pay for trash removal. So we're unhappy, too. But the problem is when you're showcasing your town on a weekend, you have people coming in for the Mill Street Run, mm -hmm. for the food festival, for people just walking wedding. Mill Street, or weddings. A wedding dinner. I mean, you, you know, you see trash all over town. It's embarrassing. But, I mean, I talk to them. I talk to the owner. It's not like I'm talking to somebody that doesn't have any pull or control. They take my call and they says, look, right. we'll come to a meeting. You want us there in October? You know, we're going to do the best we can to get back on schedule. So... Also, Ralph, we take our own trash away from the area down at the wharf. Because I saw something on there that I guess they're not going to take the trash from the wharf. That That is not even a part of their, All right. you know, it, they're not even involved in that. Our guys empty trash three days yes. a, week, a week, plus weekends. We have people going in. The trash, the, the trash cans in town are being used for the wrong thing. It was for somebody walking by that had a soda that went right. to throw a cup in. Pizza They're boxes. They're eating lunch down there. Beer boxes. Pizza boxes. And they shove it in the top, and they don't put it down. So everybody just throws trash on top of it, and it's all over the ground, and our guy's got to pick it up. If so nobody's, a, nobody's sitting here saying, we, we're okay with what's going on. Uh, we're not okay with what's going on. <clears throat> But we're trying to work through it, just like every other township and borough in Bucks County and throughout the state of Pennsylvania. That's the first thing. The second thing is uh, Pico, I don't know where, another stupid rumor is they're ripping up all our streets and we should take tip out money. If anybody rips up a street, Pico comes in or Aqua, they fixed what they ripped up. It's not a taxpayer thing. And some of these people run for office. This is how bad these people, imagine them sitting here. But anyway, anybody that rips up a street or does a gas line or does electric or aqua, they are responsible to fix that whatever they excavate it will be taken care of. Uh, again, I want to Jump on what the chief said about the St. Anne, St. Mark Carnival. It was a huge success for the parish. Uh, everybody knows Ernie DeCaro and his wife are very good friends of mine. They sponsored, I think it was 435 borough residents, kids, that went on the rides free because of their generosity. And he also fed them whatever they wanted to eat, pizza and hot dogs and fries. The kids had a ball. And, uh, and he, he will continue to do it. Like the chief said, hopefully this is something that we started that will continue in town. And we also had a couple other uh, people that our political committee paid for Saturday night. We took five hours off wristbands. And uh, our Democrat uh, chairman, John Cardisco, paid uh, for all the St. Mark's kids on Thursday night to ride free. So it was a pretty good week for kids in town. They all enjoyed it. They all had a lot of fun. It was a lot of work, but it's a, it's a great fundraiser for the church. And I'm honored to be part of this and, and still running it for them for years. With that said, is I'm a little disappointed that we lost Italian Day in town. So last year, uh, was COVID, and then this year they decided to do away with it, and they started a food fest, three-day food festival, 
which is great. I think the Lions do a great job, and I want to support them in any way I can. But I'm asking council for their blessing to, I want to now run Italian Day. So I'm going to take that project on. It's not like I need another project <laughs> with everything else. I mean, I got the carnival. I got the rescue squad. I got counts. But, I mean, there's ethnic days that are down there. There's, and I think that Italian Day needs to be brought back. But I want to bring it back the way it was 40 years ago with a ton of vendors and a lot of different things. Can I pull this off? I don't know. This year, um, this, yeah, for August, for September of next year. Oh, right, gotcha. 22. Oh, I meant like, yeah. no, 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 no. You're scared. I thought you meant you were trying it'll to do be, something It'll Christmas. be the weekend before the do-op. Yeah. And if they want to do the food festival, they could do that, pick another date. But Italian Day was always the last second Saturday. It was in August, and they moved it to September. So anybody in town that wants to join me in this venture or anybody wants to help in any way, please contact the borough and uh, let them know, Give, leave your number here at the borough and I will contact you. But I can guarantee you one thing, I try to do a lot of things right. Next year's Italian day will be very, very interesting. And so people are going to have a good time. Pizza free again, right? Everything, I'm trying to get oh everything back. God. I already talked to vendors in New York. And I already that, talked I to vendors watching. that do the the, the Italian day in uh, Jersey, and I like to do it on Sunday. That's okay. when, that's when it should be done on Sunday. Okay. I know that the rain dates the cushion, but we'll put the Blessed Mother in a window and just hope that's for good right. weather. So. That's right. Right, Mar? That's right. <laughs> so if nobody has a problem with that, I'm going to move forward and start forming committees and do I need to get this day from council? How do I get this day? Well, you can fill out an application. And <laughs> no problem. Okay. I love it. I love it. I want to fill it out. Now we know who the real boss is around here. So anybody from council that wants to help or be involved with it or borough residents, I, I appreciate their help. So again, Call the borough, uh, email jdillon at bristolborough.com, or, or call and talk to Lisa or Mara and tell them you're interested in helping with the Italian Day Festival for, for next year. Very exciting. I think that's all I might have for now. And again, I want to thank Herbie for our fire chief for getting this uh, $638,000 mm -hmm. in for uh, the fire apparatus. And the last thing is the street sweeper. Let's clear one more thing up. Mm -hmm. You know, it's election time. Everybody's got a lot to say. The street sweeper, we, we're applying for a grant through the RDA. Hopefully we get that money. If we don't get that money, the money is in through our uh, refuse and our uh, liquid fuels to purchase a sweeper which we were going to do last year but with COVID but for us to order this sweeper we need to do it now for next maybe have it ready for March April of next year that's how long it takes to get one just like we're ordering a new ambulance again for the rescue squad we won't have that now until probably August of next year that's if we're lucky to get it in August of next year. So that's how backed up everything is. Okay, I'm done. Michael, what do you have, buddy? Um, I just wanted to mention that uh, this weekend it was nice to see all the activities going on in Bristol, you know, between the, uh, the food event, the Kelmar uh, Nickel. There was a wedding, uh, it was just really nice to see, you know, everything that was going on. Um, <clears throat> and also, once again, um, you know, I, I constantly mention it, but I'm very, you're very lucky to have the public works support that we have. Uh, there's never an issue. They never say no. They're always, what do you need? Uh, also, the police department. Um, 
all of that. So I just wanted to really mention uh, that it was really nice to see that and um, that everybody uh, showed up proud of the town. So, thank you. Thanks, Michael. Anna Laracy did text me. She said the rain date is 5 o'clock on Sunday, but she gave us a guarantee it will not rain. <laughs> and I trust Anna. Believe me, when she says something, something it's, it's the truth. Okay, Lily, what do you have? All right, I'd just like to start with a, uh, to honor the people that have been affected by 9-11 at this 20th anniversary. You see how many people, we know how many people got it, their lives affected that day, but 20 years later, it was some of the stuff on TV was just, just fantastic. And it, it just brings you to tears when you see how this, this affected us. And, Hope, hope everything is never happens again to our country. Um, on a local basis, with all this crazy weather that we've seen, I want to thank Merle and Mr. Dillon and Chief Henry and their staffs because they've all came to uh, you know came to our aid. No matter what happened, they were there, and uh, it just shows how. How great it can be when everybody works together. Um, and with this bad weather, I was working at the fair, and I happened to be with uh, one night. I was with Scott Eddings from Rackliff Insurance, <coughs> talking about you know, people's basements flooded. How many people <coughs> flooded that never flooded before? And most didn't get paid, and some did get paid from their insurance. And he explained to me how there's a sump pump rider on homeowners insurance and he said they always recommend it to people because if you have it and you have a sump pump and it fails to keep up you're covered if your basement floods mm -hmm. if the water just cascades in you're not covered so uh, <coughs> i would just advise people to, to talk to their insurance company to look at this i didn't i didn't realize uh, that was the case uh, but it was, it was good to uh, good to know that. And he said it's relatively. Uh, when you think about it, it might be a, like a hundred dollars on your policy, additional hundred dollars on your policy. But it can uh, anybody who went through and got their basement flooded, they know the cost uh, that they incurred. And last thing, I just like to put a plug in for Wednesday, uh, the fifteenth. Uh, I work with a foundation, and there's a trade show called the Ideas Trade Show in Valley Forge uh, for contractors and municipalities and uh, maintenance people and even do-it-yourselfers and free admission. It runs from like 8.30 in the morning till 3.30 in the afternoon. But if anybody's interested in seeing what's new in the industry uh, or want some ideas on what's going on in the uh, in the building trade, uh, stop in. That's all I have. Thank you. Thank you. Where is that again? That's the Valley Forge Convention Center. Thank you. Just talk and just go ahead. I got that. Pardon me. Can you go? Can I do it again? Go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> um, I uh, also wanted to welcome uh, Mayor Saxton back. It's, it's good to see you up and about. Um, we're happy to see you here. And uh, also thank the chief for, for his service. Um, you know, you brought a level of professionalism that I hope we continue in, in the uh, department as you move on, and I wish you luck in your next venture. Uh, and as we explore who our next chief will be, I, I think we need to maintain those standards as well. And uh, so we appreciate all your efforts. Sorry to see you go, but happy that you're moving on to that next stage of your life. So. Um, and then uh, also I just wanted to speak to the deputy chief uh, position. Um, happy for, uh, I'm happy to vote for AJ. I think he's a very qualified uh, candidate for that job. Uh, but I would also like to see, and I know the mayor agrees with this, that we continue to empower some of the younger guys in the fire fighting force. You know, uh, people like Steve Reeves, who I know, uh, you know, has been a big part of trying to help bring the departments together. And I think uh, you know the young guys are going to be the future of this. So AJ's in that camp as well. Um, and I, I just want to acknowledge that there are a lot of young guys out there that are trying to keep this thing going and keep it.
being built and AJ and Steve and, and others who I'm sure I'm not mentioning are, are doing a good job. So just want to keep those, those people on our radar as well. Uh, that's all I have. First, I'd like to thank Herb Slack for uh, getting the money for the fire departments. Um, I'd like to offer you our best wishes to you and your family and whatever you do, Chief. And uh, the do up um, I think we should always remember that Anthony Musi was a big part of the do up and um, that whole day uh, we all should remember him and thank him for, you know, what he did. He was really, really intricate and, in, in, like, he had an intricate, um, I don't know. He just really worked hard on it, and I really thank him for that. Um, also, I'd like to thank the police for everything you did at the fair. Uh, a lot of your felt guys came and put a lot of time in, and they were so good to the kids. And it was awesome. And uh, the the Caro family can't thank you enough for all the money that you've given through the years. Um, kids really enjoy it, and that's what it's all about. You know, it's about the kids. So um, also, I'd like to um, give AJ my, you know, uh, I'd like to accept him too as as a um, assistant. And Steve Reeves, is, like I, like you said, he's a great guy. He, he's been doing a lot for the fire department. So um, if we could, you know, put him in there somehow too, that would be wonderful. Um, I also want to talk about the fair and everything that goes into it. Um, I know people are sick of hearing me, but uh, they don't know that Ralph and all of his friends, and he's got a lot of them, spend the whole week prior to this fair from morning till night they stop doing work they don't go to their jobs they're there preparing for this fair and then the week of the fair they're cooking they're cleaning pans they're doing everything and and this includes i mean mr katrochi here i mean so many people. I shouldn't even just point up one person out because Angela Grizzlia, you know, is another. I mean, there are so many people involved in this, and it's such a great community get together for everybody. Um, and I really want to thank you, Ralph, because if it wasn't for you, we wouldn't have this. And my my family came in from Altoona, Pennsylvania, and they said, "You people have the best town." In America, this is like the best kept secret <coughs> in all of America. They said, "Look at this place. Look at look, look at this fair that they're putting up. Look at uh, the river. Look at I mean, we really should be thankful, and we should all want to volunteer for everything that comes up because we have such wonderful things in this town. And like I said, Ralph, I really appreciate it, and all of your friends are." You have good people around you. Thank you. Thank you. But like you said, I couldn't do it without I know. people that make it possible. Okay, Betty? Yeah. Um, I'd like to thank Carla Reynolds, who's sitting out here, who helped organize Unity Day this year. I know a lot of things weren't like they used to be. We used to have all these events at the Wharf all year long, especially in the summer. We have Puerto Rican Day, African American Day, we have Italian Day. It's, it seemed to like dwindle down, but you made Unity Day come out and we needed that. And then we were able to do Puerto Ricans, had their little monument, they had their little Unity Day. And it was, it was different, it was nice. I was unable to be there, but from what I heard, it was amazing. So thank you. That's first. We also will be celebrating Puerto Rican Day next year, and then we'll be celebrating 50 years of commitment to Bristol Borough. I remember when we were young, when I was young, I'm still young, but anyway, we used to go to, um, over here across the train station, that park, Working. that's where we celebrated Puerto Rican Day. And everybody would bring food, we'd bring our big pots with our rice and beans and everything else, and we'd make 
little things and kids would play and that was Puerto Rican Day. Puerto Rican Day is so much different now and now it's coming back and they're celebrating 50 years and I'd like to bring them in next year and give them a declaration for all the time because this is family. It's like been the Cologne family, the Barocco family, the Rodriguez family. Like, it's so many families that have stuck together and done this. So I look forward to seeing Italian Day, but I also look forward to seeing Puerto Rican Day. Um, I'd like to thank the chief for everything he's done for this town, for being able to be someone I can speak to and go to for a problem. And that's important because sometimes our residents don't feel comfortable going directly to you, and they come to us, and we have to be the middle guy. And thank you, and I wish you all the luck in the world. We do have a great bunch of police officers downstairs. They, I saw them at the parade. It's nice. Anytime there's an event going on and I'm there, they're there. And thank you. And I, like I said, I wish you all the luck in the world. I'm sorry to see you go. Um, the thank, I would like to thank the DeCaro family because, I mean, to take on something like that at the fair and pay for all the children to be able, and for anybody else, like for, for everyone involved. Louie was involved. Michael was involved. Lorraine was involved. Greg, everybody that gets involved, but Ralph is the leader. Whether people like it or not, Ralph gets it started and gets it done. And that's what we always need, someone who can get it done. And he does. So thank you for working so hard. Every volunteer in Bristol Borough that had volunteered. Um, <coughs> people complain about the street sweeper. I see it. I don't comment. I just watch. You can't complain if you're throwing debris into the street, if the trees, <laughs> if there's a storm and now there's a whole bunch of tree branches in the street, the street sweeper's job is not to come and pick that up for you. I watched the guy get out of the truck, pick up the pieces of wood so that he can run it correctly to pick it up correctly. We all as residents need to take it upon ourselves, go out front, sweep it up, pick it up, pick up the big stuff. And when a street sweeper comes, it'll do a better job. It'll be better. We want our streets clean. We want our sidewalks clean. But we all need to work together with that. So, I, Mr. Dillon, I'd like to thank your person. And I'll tell you who it is later. But um, please clean up the debris. I also would like to see if we can get that bridge on Van Street, the Scepter Bridge. There's graffiti under there again but it needs a power wash before winter hits. It looks disgusting. <clears throat> it's dirty. It's, it just needs to be cleaned. It needs to be power washed. And I know before we had the fire company do it, and I requested this a while ago, and I didn't see it happen. doesn't mean it didn't happen. It doesn't look like it did. But if we could get somebody to go under there and clean that up, I'd really appreciate it. And that's all I have. The bridge on Green Lane, the underpass, there's a dead deer laying there. And you can't even get down. To, it's it's so bad. We, can we get? I know we keep saying, but can, is there any way to cite PennDOT or anybody to come in and clean up their property? You can't even walk down that street. So bad. Down that so side. Bad. Impassable. It is so bad. It's so bad. It's um, it's embarrassing. People are walking here's, in the street. Here's the problem I have. There's things that we can control. There's things we can't control. Like Betty said. Why don't people just go out front and sweep their sidewalk, cut some weeds around their tree base, make the side, the house look a little present? You don't need money to do this stuff. The street sweeper comes every Thursday and Friday, even if you don't want to bend down and pick it up, sweep it to the gutter so that we can pick it up. We have a lot of people that come through this town. Take a little, take 10 minutes and, and have some pride in your property. I don't understand whether you're a renter or you're a homeowner, why you can't go out in front of your house and make it look presentable. It's it's frustrating, it's aggravating, and we need to hire inspectors to send you a note to yeah. say, please clean up your property. When that's something you should be doing, if you had any kind of self-esteem or any kind of responsibility, clean your property up. Stop being a pig. And these people are pigs that won't clean up their property. I'm tired looking at properties in this town that we have to send our inspectors out to clean the property up. Take 15 minutes and clean your property. 
if but you don't I, like it, you know how to reach me. I'm here every month. Can I say something? I'd also like to thank the people that do keep their places. And, and they got to live next to a pig. That's right. <coughs> That's right. That's the problem. Yep. I just wanted to add one thing I, I forgot. I wanted to thank uh, uh, John Mundy and the Mill Street Run. Yeah. Thank the chief. His men were there. They were out on their bikes. They were on foot. The Bucks County Rescue Squad had their bike patrol out. Uh, and, and I was there for quite a few. My son ran in the 8 o'clock race, and then my two grandsons ran at 9.30. So I spent a lot of time that day uh, watching the Mill Street Run, but it was there were 27 high schools there. Wow. It was, a, it was the largest group of high school, and it was probably one of the largest groups of, uh, in their open race also. Uh, and they had you know, the high schools, they had girls, uh, girls, high school girls and boys. The, the JV teams, the girls and boys ran together. It, it, was, it was amazing, and everybody really had a good time, and uh, and the police even told me they were trying to keep up on their bicycles with the <coughs> runners. They were getting. <laughs> he said, they, they, it was quite quite a day. So thank you, thank your team, Chief, and uh, and thanks to the rescue squad also for all they did for us that day. Thanks, Luke. Jim, you uh, if I just may add a little bit to the Mill Street Run, Merle. Did a fantastic yes. job coordinating uh, everything. He's he even gotten does. some Boy Scouts involved to help us with some of the crossings because it's getting more and more difficult to get volunteers. But uh, quick side note: I got a text from Merle at 7:30 on Saturday morning that we were missing some porta potties, so I called the emergency number of the porta potty guy. He called me back 20 minutes later, I explained, we're missing four. He says, that's impossible. I said, look, I'm the manager, let's get him out. He says, the only one that can authorize it is Merle Winslow. <laughs> 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 oh, I love it. I love it. Thank you, Merle. Thank you, Merle. I'm on the wrong side of baseball, but the guy says, he's right. not authorized. You know, now we know who's really in himself. charge. <laughs> All right, uh, real quick, uh, just some comments uh, for clarification and whatever. The ordinance on the feral cats it reflects the wording that our resident wanted. Mm -hmm. So uh, that, that's what's before you this evening. Uh, uh, Ralph touched on the uh, street sweeper. Uh, we will also be applying for a uh, police uh, SUV. Uh, public works vehicle, as well as the street sweeper, as well as demolition of Chestnut Street in our applications that Mara will be working on and has to be in by the end of the month. So I just wanted to mention that. Uh, also on the agenda is this uh, uh, low bid for the Autos, Pavanta, and Sons in the amount of 45000 this deals with the spur line path crossing the beaver and pond. It's the brand new alignment with the traffic signal. So mm -hmm. PennDOT has been uh, telling us that they want this done for years. We finally got a grant. So it will be AD, ADA compliant. So the residents will be walking a little bit out of the, the normal, but uh, it's a requirement that PennDOT is forced down. <coughs> forced down our and the other, on the other comment is the bids for the Mill Street parking lot. Uh, the copies of those bids were in your packet. Mm -hmm. uh, the issue uh, before uh, council is uh, do we want to also award the alternate one, which is the storm sewers? Uh, I think you definitely should uh, award the alternate two, which deals with the ADA curbs. So uh, what's before you is uh, either awarding uh, the bid to uh, Miko con con Constructors in the amount of $993,295 for the entire resurfacing of the parking lot as well as the storm sewers as well as the ADA curbs or not do the storm sewers uh, and uh, just spend uh, the bid then would go to uh, J.D. Morris in the amount of $586,185. So. Can, can I comment on that or do you want to wait until we get to the voting portion of that? 
questions. So, add questions for Jim. So, is this the same project in which there was a matching grant awarded where we would have to, uh, you know, for the repairs of the Mill Street parking lot? Is this that uh, same project? We had to put off the uh, certain value of the parking lot. They accepted that. Right. The only thing that the borough will have to pay for is the engineering. Right. But the construction cost uh, is part of that art Right. right, okay. So that is that. So my other question is this. I am certainly no engineer, don't claim to be, but clearly in the last year, two years, I mean, the flooding has been even worse than it's been before uh, all over town, not just there. I just don't want to see us spend a million dollars. Um, I know it's grant money and it's not, it's, it's not our money, but I just want to make sure that all those things are being closely considered about the flooding and the design of it and the storm drains. I don't know if that's designed. I, maybe Amanda would speak to that more. I, I don't know. But I'm just worried about, you know, you see the, the state of that parking lot right now is such a mess. And I think half of it is because it's underwater half the time. Yeah. yeah. And I mean, ultimately, that is the, the issue is that, I mean, most of that parking lot is in a flood plain. And I don't know that there's really a <coughs> wonderful answer. <coughs> So it's way too close to the river right. elevation. Um, that being said, potentially there can be you know, some efforts to improve the, the situation by replacing these storm pipes under the parking lot with this funding. Which is part of, of this. Which would be the alternate that Mr. Dillon just mentioned. Um, is that going to solve the issue again? No, it's, you know, it's just the nature of the elevation of the parking lot. I don't know that um, without, you know, frankly, millions of dollars are we going to solve something that large. Um, it, and, may, it may help, though. I'm sorry. And maybe this is maybe also from the film. This bit is, is nothing about redesigning. It's just redoing, right, the parking lot itself. You can't, you can't change the... Uh, elevations or anything. No, I just mean even like the you know the islands that you park at and all that kind of stuff. That's just this is just a redo. We would be adjusting just that trailer parking that's in the last row, um, just to make that regular car parking. Um, but other than that, it would be repaving, resurfacing, ADA curb ramps at certain locations, and then potentially those storm. Is there any places. material designed as a repaver that will be underwater? I mean, I know we're not going to stop it from flooding. Yeah. Is there anything that we're looking at doing that would just at least last last longer when it is underwater like that? Um, I mean, I think at this point, frankly, repaving might be a decent answer. I've seen, I think, already seen the condition of the parking lot right. is certainly in need of repaving. So a lot of those um, cracks and holes, you are getting more groundwater coming up through those. Yes. Um, with that, it wouldn't simply be just a standard like, overlay, overlay that you would see um, on a normal road. We would most likely be going down a little bit deeper in certain areas in order to repair, um, for example, like right outside of Mignoni's in the parking lot there, there's um, some issues there that we probably have to repair a deeper section. So again, that'll help to improve the situation. It's not certainly sure. sure. And just so I understand, why would we only, why would we go with the lower bid? Like, what would be the advantage? Or, or the, not the lower bid, the, the yeah. lesser of the two projects. Yeah, so, I mean, the, the <coughs> issue is that that is certainly a lot of money to spend. Again, it is grant funding. But the beauty of this RACP funding is that it is a little bit flexible. So the borough doesn't need to necessarily spend all of that right now. Um, I believe the state has, I want to say it's 10 years, I can check on that, um, a 10 year limit on when the money can be spent. So in theory, there are other improvements that have been talked about down the waterfront. Right. That money could go towards those things, yeah. but that would mean, as Mr. Dillon said, more engineering potentially. The only thing we don't want to do is resurface the slide and then dig up storm storm right. pipes. And that's the advantage is to get that done now, get that out of the way, because we're hopefully we wouldn't dig up a parking lot. So let me ask you a question. If we say tonight we want to proceed with this the, the high the, the right bid. Right. And 
next month in October we change our mind, can we then downgrade or do something? Um, I mean, I, there is the 30-day review right. period, so we certainly do <coughs> have some time. I think we can always maybe potentially make a motion contingent upon, you know, review of funding and of the 30-day uh, the review period. So we would be meeting October 3rd, which puts us under the 30 days. And our solicitor is not here, so. I'd recommend that if you not comfortable going either way on the table to uh, Okay. Well, I, I certainly don't want to hold anything up. I I, I, I know that the drain has got to happen, right? I mean, that part of it has I say we do the whole thing, and what, what I'm saying is, like Amanda said, let's say we want to change the lighting and not do the drains. Right. Can we do that, or are we obligated then to award this contract to this company? Right. Because he's high bid on just the paving. Right, exactly. So if you were to pull the storm piping out, you would need to award to a separate contractor and then go through that. Are we violating anything if we say we want to table this until October's meeting? Um, I don't think so, because again, we, we still are in that 30 day review period. So right. we can, um, I think Matt needs to post on the website the, the bids and then we can enter into that 30 day review period and award at the October meeting. I don't know. I mean, I'm not, it was it, just. It's a tough call. I mean, it I, is I, think, I think it can, you know, Monday morning quarterbacks it can come up with all kinds of opinions, but. My my gut reaction is you got the drainage, let's get it done. So at least you know you got a first class job. I know our guys with the new bucket truck, they they address all the lighting down at the uh, the parking lot. There's like one light I don't think we've been fixed yet, but we will fix it now that we have a higher bucket truck, or at least we think we will be able to fix it. So I think that lighting is adequate, to, uh, you know, for the time being. And I think showing the state, give us the money, we'll spend it, we'll spend it the right way, and we're in line for more money. Yeah, okay. That's my gut reaction. So you're Let's saying, word it to the high bidder. I mean, to the, to to the, the lowest, pipe. it's the responsible bid. Right. Uh, the whole job. The, the whole, whole job. job. Okay. <laughs> All right. And again, the uniqueness of this is that there is flexibility in that grant funding. Normally, if there's a grant, we say we need to spend all of it at once and we try and get as close to that number as possible. So all right. there is some flexibility. So just so we're clear, though, if we went with that responsible bid of the whole project, it is a redoing of the drainage and a repaving of the parking lot. Right. And not a grant. All right. Do Any other questions for Amanda? I have one last question. I'm sorry. Does that include the the, the path uh, along the parking lot of a repaving? We would be redoing that path, but there is um, a curb ramp that we would be putting in from the parking lot to that path. Any other questions regarding that? Jim, do you have anything else? No. Okay. Thanks, Amanda. All right. Uh, mm -hmm. We're going to go into the next phase of this meeting. Angela, you want okay. to talk? Yes, they do, Ralph. Which is the base bid alternate one? Or I want to clarify two things. Base okay. bid. That was a bomb you dropped on me. What's all right? What do you mean? Um, you taking over the Italian day. I'm going to take it all over, but I want to work okay. with the lines and everybody to try to. Well, so no, what happened this year? Because the top okay. show came okay. in, yeah. okay. it was I not a decision okay. to call it a food yeah. festival. It started yeah. with Jeff. I know. And that we served cheese. our Italian food just uh, like yeah. we normally do. Okay. But um, I've been doing it for 25 years. Okay? And the Lions really know how to operate and run that thing. Okay. We really don't need okay. anyone to Dan, tell us AJ? how to really run our well, well why don't we do this why don't we get a meeting together with you and whoever the president of Lions are and myself and let's sit down and talk and work it out yeah and see what happens is that is our money that we get for our scholarship fund right and we give ten thousand dollars out a year in scholarships oh, okay. okay and uh, when when you said that well, here's the thing, Angela. A lot of people want to bring it back to the way it was. Oh, yeah, it will Not be. Not just one stand. 
No, that's no. the problem, and it's been like that for years. No, it hasn't. Yeah. Well, how many no. stands are down there? We we normally have um, six to ten food vendors. Okay. Plus about fifty um, craft vendors. Last year we didn't have it. Right, because of COVID. COVID. I understand. And, and we had it the year before, and we did really well with it. And you know I'll work with you any way I can. Oh, I know that, Ralph. I just want to. I just want to bring it back to the way it was. <laughs> uh, unfortunately, this year was a little different because we had no idea how things were going to turn right. out. That's fine. Because you had the Celtic festival that got canceled, Puerto Rican festival got canceled, uh, Afro American got canceled. And then we looked at it and says, okay, we have an opportunity right now. The ship's coming in. So we'll serve the food. All right, and we discussed this. Right. So, um, and unfortunately, I didn't call it Italian Day. And uh, it was kind of hard to get vendors this year because everybody was afraid. Right. I mean, we're not looking at it as a borough to take your money away. We know how your organization oh, yeah, works, we, 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 and we know how much good you do with the Lions. Right. I just wanted to, I mean, if, 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 if Italian Day is not coming back. Oh, no, Italian Day is definitely coming back. Well, then let's sit down. Yeah. I like to sit down with your organization. Yeah, and, and, we'll, and it will come back the way it used to be. Okay. Um, unfortunately, this year, we weren't sure what was going to happen. Well, was everybody else canceling their festivals? We took a we took a shot. I mean, I right. I was I was I didn't even order enough food. I heard. <laughs> <laughs> okay, it was just one of those things. Just had so. No when do you guys meet? Oh well, we have our meetings uh, uh, the first and third Wednesday of the month. But so maybe this, you can invite me to a meeting. That I could do. I'll. And I'll, I'll make I'll, myself available. I'll, I'll see. We'll invite you. It's a Wednesday night. Sorry. Okay. I'll try not to do it on the council. I thought you guys met on Tuesdays. Uh, King George is not open on Tuesdays oh. anymore. And uh, that. Uh, uh, so, but uh, that's where we're at. We're at King George, and it's uh, two nights a week. Let or, me, we can't have it on right. uh, a Sunday. Well, let me tell you, there's a lot of people who are upset. Uh, I know they were. I, I went down Sunday. Merle called me. We had a sinkhole. I, know. At the, I was heading with my family, and I, I came back. Uh, I turned around, drove back a half hour to see what was going on. I wasn't there 20 minutes. People were coming up to me saying, when's Italian Day? When I said, this is a very... So, all I'm saying is if you guys are going to abandon Italian no, Day... No, we, we don't want to abandon it. Well, let's discuss yeah. this at your yeah, meeting. Yeah, we'll, 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 get it, we'll get it straightened out Let let you know. I don't know how the rumor started that the Lions Club canceled Italian Day and we're not going to do it anymore because I got... I, My wife really jumped on me <laughs> yesterday. Okay, and and then I get um, asked by Donnie, why the uh, wife attended it canceled from now on? I says, ask, where did that rumor start? Uh, we, I couldn't understand it. I didn't start it. Welcome to our world. All right, so let's let's. You're going to meet in October. Yeah, we'll we'll we'll. I'll I'll let you know. When let me know meet. when I can attend. And, and meeting. we'll 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 hash it out and we'll. See what we can do about getting other vendors there. It, it's hard to get vendors right now. I mean, they're afraid to go out by themselves. Too. They, they don't want to take. I was out. Take Monica Howard at you. Well, <laughs> I know she, well, she, she made it known that she was upset. <laughs> All right, thanks. I didn't Andy. think she did. Okay, but I, I, I just wanted to clarify a few things uh, that we did not cancel Italian Day and. It will be here next year. All right. Well, I like to just maybe be part of it or help work yeah, with it. Yeah, I, I, I know people want it the way it was oh, 30 yes. or 40 years ago. Oh, well, no, they no, want to no, bring no. it back. So it back, if back. I got to help okay. raise money or I got to yeah. do something, I want to be involved in any way. Okay. That, that'll be fine. All right. That'll so let the line let your group know that I want to help. Okay. That'll be fine. So. And it's still not taken away from us. I think a lot of people were confused too, Angela, because I had a lot of people reach out to me and say, so Italian Day is this weekend, 
And I said, no, there's a food festival this weekend. I'm doing so maybe yeah. they thought, oh, well, is that taking place of the Italian yeah. Day? Well, it did this year. And but we, we served, didn't have the Oregon Day, I understand. We served our Italian food. We basically served what we served. We're serving it. I'm not going to get into it tonight, but serving Italian <laughs> food is an Italian food. Right. We served Italian food at the corner. I told them. Back there. Told no, them I mean, yeah. let's. So, no, our, 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 well, you, you can't right. call, you can't call chicken fingers right. and, uh, and French fries Italian food. All right. Food. Thanks, okay. Ed. Thank you, Ralph. All Thanks right. for hearing me out. No problem. Have a good one. All right. Mayor, you have anything? No. Please. Anybody in the public want to speak on anything before we go? You do? Hi, my name is Carla Reynolds. I'm a community organizer. I just want to give thanks to the committee for allowing me to have Unity Day. I want to give a special thanks to Chief Henry. Without him and Merle, it wouldn't have been a success. Merle came out and walked out there with me to explain to me where to put the, the where they be able to put the stands at for food and non-food. Um, Chief Henry was amazing. He had coverage. We, it was a success. It was a great thing. I think it's something that we should do every year. Uh, a lot of people really liked it. We honor, and I'm so glad I was able to honor Chief Henry because we were going to honor him. We were going to surprise him. And I'm glad we did it this year, then next year, because he's been here. He's a great guy, and I wish he wasn't leaving, because I think he's a very amazing person. And, and once again, I would like to thank you guys for allowing me to have dinner today. And if God's willing, we'll have it next year. Right. Yeah. You're welcome back. Thank you. Anybody else want to? Merle? Thank you. <laughs> I, I'm glad the mayor's back, and I'm glad to hear that they're considering AJ for that position. He's a young go-getter, got a fire in his belly as a fireman, and, and uh, he's very well trained, and he's going to be a great asset to the town. Uh, as far as Betty's comments tonight, the bridge at Bath Street, that was never in the examination when they did come in and did the bridges they started with spruce street and they went as far as beaver but they only did the three in between so that needs that should be looked at and as far as the drainage goes people are complaining about the drainage all over the place but yet i ride around town and i see people cutting their grass and it's yes, going in the street yes. they blow it in the street and where do they think it goes it goes in the drains exactly so hopefully something can be done about that. Um, I think that, that was the thing. But um, Chief Henry, um, I wish you the best. You were great, great to work with. Um, we'll start on the mission. Thanks, Mark. Thank you, Mark. Anybody else on the side of the room want to speak on anything? That ends public participation. Let's go to our regular agenda, number three. Mr. Mr. President, I'd like to make a motion, sorry, to accept council meeting minutes for August 6, 2021, accept the treasurer's report for July 21, accept the fire chief report for August 2021, accept the inspection department report for August 2021, accept the police chief report for August 2021, accept the public works report for August 2021, and accept the hard report for August 2021. I have a second. I'll second. Any questions or comments? All those in favor? Aye. Opposed? Mr. Number President, four. I'd like to make a motion to approve the ordinance restricting the running of cats at large and the feeding of feral cats by deleting Chapter 2, Part 6, Section 2 602 and replacing with it shall be unlawful for the owner of any cat or cats to allow or permit such cat or cats to run at large in the borough. It shall be unlawful for anyone to feed unmanaged or unkempt colonies of cats anywhere in the borough. Second by Lorraine. Questions or comments? The only comment I have is that the uh, young lady that spoke at our meeting, she has helped with all this wording in here. So everybody's Very on good. Board with very this. good. Okay? 
Yeah. Any questions or comments? All those in favor? Aye. Opposed? Mr. President, I'd like to make a motion to approve the lease and license agreement between the County of Bucks and Bristol Borough for a mail-in ballot box to be located in the first floor lobby at Bristol Borough. Second, Mr. President. Questions or comments? The only comment I have, I, uh, Commissioner Harvey has contacted the borough. This is a pretty uh, regulated thing. They have cameras on it. They have somebody watch it. The box locks uh, when they leave. There can't be anybody tampering with these things, so it's pretty safe and secure. It will be in the borough lobby uh, for anybody who wants to drop off a ballot. And somebody from the county, I think, is here so many hours a day manning this thing. Good. Right? That's great. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? I'd like to make a motion to approve the waiver of a land development from McDonald's remodel expiration date is 10-17-21. Second by Mr. Catrucci. Questions or comments? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? I'd like to accept the police chief, Steve Henry's, Stephen Henry's retirement letter, last day of work, November 17, 2021. I have a second. Back up by Mr. Pettit. When we're getting second, Chief, you had to stay. Yeah, they don't want to Any questions or comments? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? I'd like to approve a purchase of one new street sweeper from the U.S. Municipal Coast Stars in the amount of 318 slash 345. The quote 7963. Mm -hmm. Second by Mr. Catrucci. Questions or comments? All those in favor? Aye. Opposed? Aye. Number nine. Mr. President, I'd like to make a motion to approve the appointment of the Deputy Chief, um, should I say A.J. DeAngelis, mm -hmm. at this point, A.J. DeAngelis, uh, to the vacant position. Second by Ms. Collin. Questions or comments? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Number 10. Mr. President, I'd like to uh, make a motion to approve the lowest responsible bid from Donato, Spaventa, and Sons in the amount of $45,033 per Gilmore letter of 9821 to have spur line path crossing at Beaver and Pond to be in compliance with PennDOT permit as well as ADA compliance. Second by Mr. Gatrucci. Questions or comments? All those in favor? Aye. Opposed? Number 11. I'd like to make a motion to approve the adoption of resolution for 2021 minimum municipal obligation for non uniform pension plan. I have a second. Second by Mr. Pezza. Questions or comments? All those in favor? Aye. Opposed? Aye. Number 12. I'd like to approve, an adoption, approve adoption of resolution for 2021 minimum municipal obligation for uniform pension plan. Second by Mr. Pezza. Questions or comments? Just so you know, these are standard things that we have to do every September mm -hmm. for these pension funds. All those in favor? Aye. Opposed? Number 13. I'd like to approve the adoption of resolution for 2021 minimum municipal obligation defined contribution plans. Second by Mr. Pezza. Questions or comments? All those in favor? Aye. Opposed? Number 14. And I'd like to approve acting for <coughs> bids for Mill Street's parking lot paving. That would Second be. Second by. Wait a minute. we got to put, say, Mecca Constructors Incorporated. With the base, the base bid and the alternate one and alternate two of 99, $993,295 dollars um, for the parking lot paving. <coughs> Second by Mr. Gorman. Questions or comments? Just so you know, again, this is grant money. It's not taxpayers' money. So I think we. We did a good job. Yeah. And, and just so everyone knows, we did meet down there. Um, it was Ralph, Mr. Dillon, Mr. Pezza, uh, myself. We had uh, Tommy Tomlinson. We had Galloway, Michael. And we did meet. We did discuss this a while ago. And it, this is going to be a great improvement for that area and for Bristol Wells. Any other questions or comments? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. <laughs> Anything else? Another new bill. Motion to adjourn. Motion to adjourn. I got a second by Mr. President. Meeting adjourned. Nice.